Welcome back to Big Fish in the Middle Kingdom, and this is, of course, the Big Fish Side Dish, which is the special complimentary show to the regular Big Fish I do every week. And I'm detailing this a little bit because I've noticed a bit of a spike in the numbers of this show. So thank you and welcome to any new people discovering this. I think part of that is, of course, people who are tracking this by way of my other show, which is a brand new show called How China Works that we're currently pushing out there and discussing a lot, me and my co-host, Ying Ying Lee. I'll have more to say about that in a few minutes. But I thought I would take a little bit more of a descriptive moment here and give you some information about this because there are some new people listening. So basically, Big Fish in the Middle Kingdom, the regular version of this of this specific show, is a interview with me and one or more guests. And it's usually an in-depth thing about their story, what brought them to China, what's their connection to it, and what they're doing. And some shows have more of a China focus. On some of them, that's just really like tangential because they have uh, something interesting to say or a really interesting journey. But those shows are meant to be really evergreen, so we don't really get too much into current events. They're not meant to be super topical. Whereas I had this desire because I kept talking to people who become either were friends prior to their interview or become friends since. And, you know, we have some fun conversations and occasionally we think, wow, this is kind of, this is either maybe interesting to share with people or it's just funny and we'll put it out there and some people will will be amused. So I started doing this side dish format as a way to do a second version of Big Fish every week, but not a brand new straight up interview. So again, that's just to kind of give you the, the difference between the regular Big Fish in the Middle Kingdom and the side dish version. This is also where I'm going to start doing the solo shows. And I think that, you know, a lot of the podcasters I listen to have been doing this for a while and I do solo shows on and off. Sometimes it's because a guest booking doesn't come through and I don't have time to, to rebook somebody. Or sometimes it's just because it's, you know, I have things I want to say. And I think that the side dish is kind of the right banner for me to put that under. Now, one thing about these is they're very unedited. And, you know, the regular Big Fish show, I let the people speak their mind and there have been some pretty interesting things said on that show. But it's, you know, it's it's tightly curated, and I'm trying to do as professional of a show as possible. And what I would say about the side dish is that it is very unedited, and even in uh, for this one, right? So other than needing to, if I had a coughing fit or something, I would cut that out. But even if I take a moment and ramble to collect my thoughts, I mean, I have an outline of things I want to talk about. But this is going to be very straightforward. So having said that, Oh, I'm catching my breath, and I apologize. I tried not to yawn right in your ear. Why am I catching my breath? Well, for one reason, I'm middle-aged and out of shape, but that's another reason. The main reason is that I just got back from a trip to Los Angeles last night, and it's been... It was a great trip. I'll talk about it in some detail. That's kind of the main point of this show. I have a few other things to talk about first, but this was my very first trip back to the U.S. in two whole years, so I've lived in China two and a half years full-time, and I've made a lot of trips other places. I've been all through China. I've been into Mongolia a bunch, mostly for, um, you know, for like visa runs, and I've been to South Korea for a minute. I've spent a lot of time in Hong Kong, but very first time back in the U.S. since one week after the 2016 elections, and that wasn't a political choice. It's just kind of happened to work out that way, but I will say that, you know, I, I kept running into people in L.A., and, oh, we haven't seen you. Where you been? I'm like, well, the last time I was here, you elected Trump, so I thought I'd come back when you had things figured out, and circumstances in life brought me back before then, but anyway, uh, not to be, you know, too too goofy here, but basically so much has changed for me that this trip, you know, in this two and a half years I've been gone, and then I had a visit back about six months later, um, actually for the American film market. I was I was sent there for work with my old company, and so much has changed in the meantime that this really provided this special opportunity for me to kind of reflect on things that have passed. Now, I'm not going to attempt a two and a half year recap right now, don't worry, but among the most meaningful things I've done since moving to China have been the creation and growth of this show, the Big Fish in the Middle Kingdom show, as well as the co-creation and launch of my new show called How China Works with Ying Ying Lee, and I'm going to talk a lot more about that in a minute. I've talked about it more in other episodes as well. But with Big Fish in the Middle Kingdom, it's provided this platform for me to be able to either talk to people I already know or to give me a good reason to reach out and introduce myself to new people and to be able to have some pretty great conversations for the most part. And I've learned an extraordinary amount along the way. And 
I have been really happy to share this, and I've seen a lot of other connections happening. I've seen people do things, both meeting for business or new friendships. Uh, new partnerships have popped up as a result of people kind of hearing someone who they think, oh, I should connect with him or her for this or that reason. And it's been really great. It's 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 been a you know it's a small kind of a world relatively speaking. Still, there are you listening to this. You're one of let's say about three thousand or so people who would listen to the show on an average month, right? So the fact is that it's a still it's a pretty small world, but it's very curated, right? If you're listening to this, you have something in common with these these people who are on and off the show, no matter how diverse they are or what they're doing is. So with how China works, um, you know, I won't give a huge pitch about that show. I want to tell you more about what it means to us. The the idea though is that Inging and I have this huge sink in terms of our missions. I mean, she's this leading cross-cultural expert. Her company, Influence, is a startup that is building itself as the world's first cross-cultural um, networking platform in terms of interest in communication. I, I'm doing a horrible job pitching her her actual venture, but in terms of you know her background, she has you know more than a decades of experience working around the world, and she speaks several languages, and dealing with all these different cultures, but of course, always coming from the point of view that her her origins are in China, but now she's out in the world, and she's learned so much, and so she can bridge these gaps. And that's what I've been working on sort of in my China Hollywood way, but as I have put more and more of a focus on, frankly, doing you know this podcast and the consulting stuff that comes along as a result... It's been really great for me to be able to also kind of play in that area a bit of terms of not just here's how you make a project work logistically and practically, but helping with understanding. You know, that's the part that's the most satisfying. Um, I mean, seeing results is satisfying no matter what you're doing, right? But seeing someone really understand something has been great. So just the serendipity of meeting Ying and us having such complementary skills and goals as well as just, you know, developing a great connection with her related to all things involved in making a show. So, you know, we co-write it, co-direct it, co-produce it, and deliver it. I mean, I do more of the technical stuff, but I mean, it's a totally a joint venture all the way here. So doing something like How China Works is something I don't take for granted. And I've been working on a page to show you what other people have already been saying about it, as well as providing a way to streamline the process to listen or subscribe to it. So please check out the website, HowChinaWorksPodcast.com. You know, as soon as you can, I'm going to be releasing this right now about, oh, it'll take me, it'll take me probably 20 or so minutes to get, do the audio production of this and spot check it and throw this up online as a very unedited hot take. So, and then I'm pivoting back to the working on the podcast, um, uh, the, the How China Works podcast website. So, you know, check that out and I'll be continuing to update over the next couple of days, but I really do encourage you to please check out that show, rate it, like it, share and subscribe. I'm super proud of what we're creating and it would really mean the world to me to have you check it out. People have been responding in a really great way. Also, one other note before I kind of get into the rest of my thoughts about this LA trip, which is, uh, you know, hopefully I haven't lost too many people. Um, I have had a few interesting conversations and I'm in some groups where this has been discussed and I've had, you know, quite a few friends just over time say, which is very nice to hear. So thank you. But basically saying, you know, Hey, your show sounds really great. Can you help me figure this or that out? So I'm going to put together some kind of a little, uh, tutorial, at least just for how I do my show. Right. I mean, I don't know everything, but I, I know how to do something that sounds pretty decent, I think. So I'm going to do a podcast audio production tips video with some examples. And it will not be super high production value on the video. It will actually be very much my iPhone camera, but I will take a lot of care in the sound with this one. And I'm going to sort of do it without a whole lot of graphics. And, you know, it's it's not going to have theme music. Maybe I'm going to may repurpose the Big Fish theme music once again, uh, as I have done for How China Works. We use that as temp music, uh, not to get too off the subject here, but you know, we use the, the Big Fish audio package when putting together How China Works, and I intended it to be temporary. And I wanted my friend Carl King to do new music for How China Works, and that, that may still happen at some point. But I saw that he was busy, and I've been super busy, and we just, I like it a lot. So I'm curious what you think. If you listen to both shows, 
Is there some kind of weird cognitive dissonance for hearing the same music on, on the two shows? Do you like that? Do you not like it? Let me know and I'll get back to it. But anyway, um, coming back from the tangent, this audio production tips video will be out, let's say, in about two weeks. I don't want to put a gun to my head here. But anyway, let's talk about L.A. a little bit. So let me catch my breath. Ugh. Wow, how about that? So unedited audio other than the one uh, coughing fit I had earlier. I cut that out. So this was a super quick visit. And if you're somebody who's a friend in L.A. and you think, why didn't you, you so-and-so, why didn't you say hi? Well, I did post on the Facebooks and the Instagrams and the Twitters that, uh, hey, guys, I'm going to be here in town. And I don't really have much time for social niceties because it's a work trip. But, you know, so if you wanted to get together with me, I posted a few places where we were going to be and people could drop in. And that's what happened. So we got to have a few drop ins with friends at a few of the spots along our flight path. And it was interesting. I was there. I'll talk more about the specific project uh, at a future date. I don't want to get into the details of what we were doing exactly. But essentially, it was casting for a short film that is a proof of concept uh, for a feature film that there are already some of the elements attached, but um, it all things being equal, it made a lot of sense to put together a short to help with validating several different things, the concept and and you know and whatnot. So we are going to be shooting this film in January in Los Angeles and finishing it basically January through probably mid February to wrap up post is the goal. So I was there with my writer director on this project and we shared an Airbnb, two bedroom Airbnb. And I got to say, you know, sharing an Airbnb with another grown ass man is an art and a science, but it worked out just fine. We were staying in Atwater village and that's an area of LA that I don't know if anyone listening to this happens to, you know, be from Atwater village. If you're in LA, you certainly are probably familiar with it, but I really love the area. I remember uh, my friend, Robert Fixer Smith used to live over there and he is a post-production guru. He worked for years at Live Nation, and he um, had a really, you know, he had a cool place over there that he built out, and then he ended up uh, doing the sort of semi-off-the-grid thing with, like, I think building a farm uh, property with a bunch of animals and stuff, and I, I haven't talked to him in years, and he just came up, but he was always the person in my mind while I was there. I didn't have time. I should have looked him up, actually, although he's not in the neighborhood anymore, but whenever I think of Atwater Village, Oh, man, what do I think of? <sighs> ah, I'm not, not bored, just can't catch my breath here. Um, I remember there was, a, there was a community that I used to be very involved in that was uh, an online community, and it had this whole group of, of, of kind of interesting artsy types. And um, Chris Gore, who created Film Threat, the magazine and website, and then they went away for a while, but they've come back more recently. And he was part of this world, and I'm just kind of acquainted, but... Um, I remember specifically Fixer having a party where I got in some giant conversation with Chris Gore about something that I can't remember, but I remember all this happened in Atwater Village, so it's a strange thing. Um, but Atwater Village is really beautiful and growing. There was this restaurant that we ate at a couple of times called Bon Vivant, and I think it was Bon Vivant Marketplace and something. It has kind of a like a long name. But it was so cool because the place where we had our temporary office space and where we got to do our casting was Royal Studios in Atwater Village. Now, I'm not even sure what they have in terms of like a website talking about this, but if there are any Beastie Boys fans, uh, this is their former clubhouse and studio. This was the place that there was a clubhouse in LA for like 10 plus years, I think it was. And now it's this, you know, it's, they keep the name Royal Studios, but it's a different man who owns it. Guy who shout out to Guy. He really hooked us up and um, it's, it's a great place. So being there was super cool. That's where we got to work. But while I was in LA, I got to visit a few of my favorite haunts. I got to go to Bob's big boy. I, uh, took, uh, took my uh, director up there for lunch and we had, um, had my buddy Cornell Mitchell came by and sat with us, a producer, director, friend in LA. And we had a drop in at Timmy Nolan's of Irish pub in Toluca Lake, which is a lot of fun. We had a working dinner at the smokehouse or a working lunch, excuse me, at the smokehouse the next day with our DP, Naeem Sarafi. Um, we spent some time at the Chateau Marmont, which I'll talk more about here in a moment. And we also got to go along as guests with uh, Naeem to the Directors Guild Theater to go see a award season screener, a screening of Widows. 
And wow, what a badass movie. Uh, Widows will be nominated for and win uh, much of everything, I think, that it, you know, that it's going to be nominated for. So uh, mentioning the Chateau Mormont, I guess it's sounds, I don't want to sound sort of LA name droppy douchey, but it's pretty funny just in terms of the world, you know, being back there and, you know, being very casual and cool. I mean, you're not in there snapping photos. That's very much not, uh, not okay. But, you know, being in there and saying, oh yeah, that's Taylor Hawkins. That's the drum of the Foo Fighters. And he's just hanging out. You know, he's waiting for a friend of his. And, uh, and then, you know, Spike Lee comes in a little bit later and he kind of sits behind us. And then we were waiting for our car. There's this, you know, kind of group of friends, kind of mixed, mixed race and gender and, and ethnicity, you know, all these, this, this kind of interesting group of really kind of pretty people. And, uh, then there's one of them and I know she looks kind of familiar, but I don't really follow reality TV, but I also don't have my head in the ground. I was like, Oh yeah, that's Kendall Jenner. And so she's there with all her friends and somebody's parking their car. So very LA, not a very typical, it's not, it's not, you know, there's no night in Beijing where you're going to casually run into Taylor Hawkins, Spike Lee and Kendall Jenner all in the same place and just being themselves. You know, there's no paparazzi, there's zero paparazzi, there's zero security around these people because they're just people living their lives and they're in kind of a, you know, it's a private secure location, but being able to have a little intensive dose of Hollywood while I'm actually there working was a lot of fun. The work itself I got to say, the casting for this project, I'm blown away by the people we got for these roles. Um, It was also really gratifying to have several former acting students who came out for one of the uh, one of the two roles. And, you know, being able to see some people who've just grown and matured people who when I was teaching production subjects, I also sometimes taught that to actors. That was actually something that um, I got involved in in teaching this one course in the acting program at my old school there in LA. And I just, I just loved it. You know, that was actually one of my favorite things because I would get to, you know, the, the main thing that I used to try to, that I used to tell actors, especially was, and what I would say at the first day of this class was, yes, you're all here to study acting. This is a class about filmmaking specifically, but I intentionally want to have you start thinking like producers. That's the goal of this class is for you to learn an overview, all this stuff. And then by the end of the course to really be thinking like a producer so that you can be really proactive in your acting career. And you're not, you know, just quote unquote, not just waiting on someone else to hire you, but, you know, having the skill sets of what it means to produce a thing will help you in infinite ways, even if you've never produced, but specifically one of the students, um, Aurora Oyoung, she has a film that I'll have to see the final box office, but it's the number one tracking film in China right now. It's in theaters and it's on Aichi uh, Pro, or maybe that's just the preview link that she sent me, a, like a, a passcode thing for. But her film is called um, iBot, and it's in the theaters. It's it's tracking higher. It's the number one tracking film on social media in China right now, and she stars in it, and she produced the movie. So how awesome is that? And just to see the progression for the last few years, you know, with her in particular, but it's been so cool. And man, you know, this is, uh, I, I had, um, like I said, I'm, I'm a little jet laggy right now. I want to say that, um, you know, I've, I managed to sleep some, but it was a lot of 16, 18 hour days with these fun places, you know, being kind of, uh, you know, moments along the way, it, it was definitely not just a party time or something like that. But, um, we got to have a really late night dinner. My last night in LA at some cool place in Glendale. I can't remember the name of the place. I've got to find it out. Cause it's a great little kind of Euro cafe joint and, um, ran into Rajiv who is, uh, whose last name, of course, I'm going to forget right now. And I don't want to try to look it up, but, uh, Rajiv has got to be the, I don't know if he's the world's only, Indian astrophysicist slash model, but uh, he's probably the best. <laughs> he's this uh, he's this kind of uh, awesome dude who's really interesting, and he also used to teach actually sciences in the um, at the same school where I taught filmmaking stuff. But we had a great chat and caught up with things, and then the last bit of the actual time in LA was I had this early morning airport run with this super cool dude, this guy named Greg Blanche, who was, you know, was, was driving the lift. He's a, um, he is an actor primarily. 
And so, like a lot of actors in LA, this, you know, driving a Lyft or an Uber, the, you know, equivalent of, you know, Didi in China, or I should say Didi is the equivalent of those because, you know, those came first. Um, but Greg was so interesting and we, we had a great talk about more things than I could even count. I mean, we started with sort of the state of existence in LA post the 2016 election results and just got into so many more things. You know, he, he just was like a great fast friend and I just, enjoyed his company so much and I wanted to name check him here and I will link he has actually it's funny I joined his uh he has kind of a goofy Instagram that's kind of for fun and I'll put that link in the show notes but he has more of a professional page and of course I don't have that link I have the one that's about him eating food and being silly but uh anyway shout out to Greg and then on the flight home as we kind of wrap this up a lot of reflection time. And I'm going to do the reflecting here in a second. This is sort of a travel log so far, but I met these two super cool people, a husband and wife from Russia. They're filmmakers and they're doing some great stuff here in China. And I hope to have them on Big Fish in the Middle Kingdom soon. So I'm working to uh, set that up. Actually, he and I, um, Sergey and I, the husband were, were we chatting last night. And so hopefully in the next month or so, we'll get them on to Big Fish. And later today, before I sort of share a couple of things, I guess, about, about reflection wise is that, uh, I get to go judge at a tech startup pitch event. So I'm specifically there in terms of the storytelling aspect and you're hearing me kind of free associate a bit on this. Right. Um, but in terms of structured storytelling, I mean, I know all, all that academically and stuff and, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to get to hear a bunch of pitches and it's a, I think it's a pretty big event. I don't know how many people will be in front of us. I understand there were like 15,000 for the weekend. It's a whole weekend long event, but the finalists will be, you know, of these people with, you know, they'll be pitching to a panel of judges of which there's VCs and there's, you know, Ying's on the panel. She actually got me involved in it. So I'm the one like storytelling weirdo, but everybody else has got some kind of a tech or a startup or a finance background. So that'll be pretty fun. I get to actually have to run in about, uh, two hours <laughs> to, to sort of make my way over there, I guess. But in terms of this trip, you know, and I'm not sure who's stayed with me this whole time right here, but it's interesting. You know, I had one friend who saw my posts on social media. I did sort of a recap on WeChat the other day where I posted like highlights of kind of most of the things I ticked off earlier that, you know, that were fun, right? They are fun and they're kind of cool, special things to get to do. And because I was only there a week, I mean, less than a week, really six, six days, uh, and not even six full days, right? I was actually there, uh, four full days. And then I was there about five, I was about four and a half days worth of time total was my whole time in LA actually. Jeez. I feel even more tired now. Um, but, you know, seeing just the highlights, it, it kind of leads me to the reality of all this. Seeing just the highlights of someone's life on social media, you know, it, it can give you a wrong impression. I mean, I said I wasn't going to do a retrospective on two and a half years, and I won't do that. But there's, you know, there's been as much down as there's been up, honestly. I mean, it's been really hard at some times. And, I, you know, that I know that's true for most people that, that even when you have some great things going on and you're able to have some moments that are just really like shining in the sun moments for you, that there's a lot of work and struggle to get there, you know? So, and there's some people that lead a charmed life or an effortless, seemingly effortless life, but they had a lot of struggle at some point to get there. Um, the people who are the exceptions to even that rule, well, I don't, you know, that they're their own special case and they're not listening to my podcast. So I'm talking to my people here. I'm talking to the people who are ambitious, have worked for something, are striving for something out of the ordinary, are, you know, looking to share experiences about people who've done some crazy adventurous things. You are adventurous yourself in your heart and your mind if not in your body and your feet, depending on your life and your wallet and your circumstances and how much you travel, maybe you have traveled to, you know, 150 countries, or maybe you've never left your hometown, but you're listening to the show and you're enjoying a window into this other world. And regardless, I love that you're listening to this and the ability to connect in this way is, it's the most meaningful thing that I've done. It's, I feel like it's the best thing I could have done. So I'm not trying to turn this into a, uh, you know, like an audio blog, basically, and just share those sorts of feelings to unfiltered. But 
uh, one thing that I said, getting back to the full circle, see, when I tangent, I do know where I started. That's that's the one superpower I've impressed people with is my ability to come back from a crazy tangent. And where I went off on the tangent was to, when I was saying that I posted sort of the highlight reel of my trip and some friend of mine, you know, you only see your friend, your common friend's comments on WeChat. That's part of what makes it kind of an interesting social network. So you might have a hundred people saying something on a post, but you know, if it's a friend of a friend of yours, like you only see the people you have as, as common friends, right? When you see someone's post. So I'm not sure who saw this, but one of my friends said, dude, I have no idea. You know, why do you live in China? Basically, he's like, this is so great. And I said, well, you know, I said, frankly, sometimes I wonder that myself, but the fact is I want to be here. I believe that, that, you know, China has a big role to play in the future. I enjoy the ability to kind of do something here, but it did get me thinking a lot more about LA and I don't want to move back. You know, I'm not going there after being there four and a half uh, days. I'm not saying I'm ready to move back, but I am really excited about going back in January. You know, I'm super excited to get to work and to be brought back for work. That's the right relationship that I want to have with the place. And I've got tons of friends fighting the good fight, you know, keeping up the struggle. My actor friend, John O'Kenyon from New Zealand, I got to see him and hang out at the Chateau. Got to see my friend Dan Gomez, who's a top production designer from Brighton, but he works all over the world. My friend Chris Sanders, one of my very best friends, you know, long time on and off uh, partner. He's an actor and a producer and just a, just a great human being for me. Lolliet, uh, Lolliet Zoe, my former assistant at Adamus, who's in grad school at LMU. Couldn't be more proud of her. You know, just seeing all these people, Julia Barron, our, our assistant in Los Angeles. And I've got such a, a network of friends and family and friends who are like family. And, you know, it just, it means the world to me to get to visit, but I need to do my own thing, right? I need to do my own adventure and I feel like it's going to involve a lot of stops in a lot of places before I'm done. If I'm lucky to live a much longer life, I'll have a lot more adventures. And, you know, whatever the duration, I will do as much as I can in the time allotted. But basically, you know, I, I guess I don't have a final, final, neatly wrapped point of this reflection other than to say that it really made me consider this, what this journey's been, you know, what's the process been, what have I done? What am I doing right now? And what do I have to look forward to? And I got to say, I love doing this show. I love doing how China works. I really appreciate you listening to this and I'm excited for the future. I hope that you will send me some comments, you know, message me. If you got my, my contacts, it's all on the website. You can find me pretty easily, but please reach out. Let me know what you like about this show. Let me know what you want to hear more of. Let me know what makes you check out. If you listen sometimes and you turn it off, let me, let me know where you check out. And uh, yeah, we'll keep on going here. Thanks again for listening. I've got a pretty, uh, pretty ambitious show coming up this week that actually has a big video component. I've got to try to find the time to edit this, this, uh, this episode that I'm referring to that will be Wednesday. It's possible that I will run an audio-only show uh, instead, if I don't have the time to do justice to this, but thank you again for listening. Lots of great stuff coming up again, how China works podcast.com. Don't forget to check it out. Thanks again, y'all. See you soon.